If you want to keep your hairline, you need to stop taking creatine. Or at least that's what some people claim. Popular among bodybuilders and athletes, creatine boosts muscle energy during intense workouts, enhancing both performance and muscle growth. Now, some believe that creatine causes hair loss because it affects levels of dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, a hormone that has been associated with thinning hair. But is that really the case? I know, I know, most of you want a simple yes or no answer. But for now, we are taking the middle lane. Indications about creatine and hair loss have mostly been based on a single tiny study. That's right, all these years and just one tiny study. In this 2009 research by Van der Merwe et al., published in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine, 20 college-age rugby players were divided into two groups. The experimental group took 25 grams of creatine daily for seven days, followed by five grams for 14 days. The placebo group, on the other hand, took a substance with no active ingredients. The result? The creatine group showed a significant increase in dihydrotestosterone, or the DHT, levels. However, there was no rise in total testosterone among the 16 men studied, and they didn't measure free testosterone, leaving some questions unanswered. Including a placebo group helps researchers see if the changes in DHT levels were actually due to creatine or just happened by chance. In this case, the creatine group showed a clear increase in DHT compared to the placebo group suggesting that creatine was the cause. Now maybe you're asking yourself, what the hell is DHT? This is a hormone formed when testosterone is metabolized. After the seven day loading phase, the DHT levels of most participants increased by 56% and remained 41% higher than baseline levels after the 14 day maintenance phase. Despite these findings, it's essential to remember that creatine has not been conclusively linked to hair loss. Since this study, there has been speculation that creatine promotes baldness when experts connected DHT to some instances of hair loss. Of course, there hasn't been a replication of these findings, and it's also conceivable that high-intensity resistance training increases DHT. So, we'll come back to the study in just a bit. Now, the rumor may have some truth to it. Dihydrotestosterone is indeed associated with thinning hair. The possibility that DHT contributes to the onset of androgenic alopecia, more often known as male pattern baldness, has given it poor reputation in the hair care community. According to the information available, the hair growth cycle is also controlled by DHT. This means it causes your hair to grow more quickly and thinner by binding to certain receptors and hair follicles. Instead of thick, lengthy locks, you get thin, flimsy hair. Your once thick mane will appear scant because the development period is shortened, causing more hair to come out than can be replaced. Some people may experience accelerated hair loss if their DHT levels are naturally high, mainly because there's an AR gene, which has the potential to enhance the function of hormone receptors and hair follicles through genetic variations. However, blaming creatine for your genetics is not the most logical thing to do here. On a related note, the enzyme responsible for turning testosterone into DHT can also be overly active in certain individuals. This enzyme may be working double duty in the hair loss community much like a barista working two shifts in the morning rush. Although DHT isn't the sole reason why certain people may need to think about wearing caps and head turbans as more than just a style accessory, it is undeniably a major factor. In the same way that estrogen is a sex hormone, dihydrotestosterone is also an androgen. The production of DHT by the body is facilitated by testosterone, another androgen. Traits such as thicker hair on the chest, bigger muscles, and a deeper voice appear in men during puberty due to sex hormones. Because DHT triggers even the smallest of these male features, overproduction of dihydrotestosterone can lead to premature and severe hair loss. When dihydrotestosterone binds to scalp hair follicles, it triggers hair loss. The hair follicles contract and in some instances close up completely. Thinner, patchier hair on the scalp results from a reduction in the diameter of the hair follicles, causing the hair that grows out of them to become thinner and weaker. The final stage of hair loss, known as baldness, occurs when the hair follicles totally shut down. Hairs that develop on top of the head, such as those around the hairline and in the crown area, are the ones most affected by DHT. The hair on the bottom half of the scalp is immune to sex hormones. Thus, a horseshoe pattern of hair often runs around the lower half of the head of patients suffering from male pattern baldness. Let's go back to that 2009 study that we mentioned at the start of this video. It was ultimately discovered that supplementing with creatine raised blood levels of dihydrotestosterone, 
The fact that DHT is a known baldness trigger lends credence to the idea that creatine contributes to the condition. However, not everyone has hair loss because of DHT. Androgenic alopecia, the medical name for male pattern baldness, is caused by genetic predisposition, and the sex hormone is the only thing that can induce this condition in men. In conclusion, while the 2009 study indicates that creatine supplementation can increase DHT levels, there is no conclusive evidence that creatine causes hair loss. The relationship between creatine, DHT, and hair loss is complex and influenced by various factors, including genetics. Therefore, it's important not to jump to conclusions and blame creatine for hair loss without considering other contributing factors. Basically, high DHT levels won't stunt your hair development unless you're born with a genotype that makes you prone to this problem. So what does this mean? Well, my friends, with or without creatine, if you are genetically predisposed to hair loss, there's not much to do here. But whether or not androgenic alopecia runs in a family is obviously something no one can say with certainty. Yet the 2009 study's subjects took 25 grams of creatine daily, which is much more than the suggested intake of three to five grams. Hence, it's possible that following the recommended dosage of creatine supplements will not affect your DHT levels. Obviously, there's just not enough information to draw any firm conclusions at this time. So what exactly will it be? Does creatine lead to thinning hair or what? Because it's so annoying to have to go back and forth. To simplify things for you, let's just stick to a yes and a no. Naturally, creatine supplements may cause a rise in DHT levels, but there is no science-backed information claiming that you will lose your hair. Taking creatine supplements may raise your DHT levels, but they won't affect your hair if you don't have a hereditary tendency for male pattern baldness. That said, there's also no way to know for sure if creatine causes hair loss based on the 2009 study. 20 males participated in the study, and the participants with the naturally low DHT levels were the ones who took the creatine pills. So really, it is not known whether the suggested daily dosage of 3 to 5 grams affects the levels of DHT in the body, because the dose that they were given was likewise very high. Then again, for those of you with a knack for basic biology, the enzyme 5-alpha reductase transforms free testosterone to DHT, a metabolite of testosterone, according to another study done in 2021 by Antonio and colleagues. Hair loss can occur in men when dihydrotestosterone binds to androgen receptors and vulnerable hair follicles, causing them to shrink. In addition to its effect on DHT levels, creatine supplementation has also been studied extensively for its effect on testosterone. Twelve different studies have looked at this, with dosages ranging from 3 to 25 grams per day over 6 to 12 weeks. The results have been mixed. Two studies showed small increases in total testosterone after 6 to 7 days of creatine use, but these increases were too small to matter. The other 10 studies found no significant change in testosterone levels. Before taking creatine, the creatine group had lower DHT levels compared to the placebo group. This suggests that creatine might have a more complex effect on hormones than previously thought. While the increase in DHT was noticeable, its impact to testosterone remains unclear and requires further research to fully understand. However, if you're a fitness enthusiast concerned about potential hair loss from using creatine, there's no need to worry. The fear of losing hair due to creatine is not supported by the evidence. If you want to learn more about the effects of creatine on your body, make sure to watch the next video.